the June views of middle middle Georgia at the moment. Me and Andrew here. We are on uh, day one slash day two of actually moving. She's been uh, pretty good today. She had her spot in her in, in the truck, right? Anyway, we're at a hotel tonight, and uh, we got a few uh, goodies along the way. Now, from where we were in Middle Tennessee, we went down uh, through Alabama, and our first stop was right here, Birmingham. And uh, <clears throat> I went over this a little bit before, but uh, Alabama is a state-run uh, alcohol liquor. So the state had buys a certain amount of a product, and that's what you can get. So there's good and bad to it. Um, but I was lucky enough to find some local gins. Uh, so I got this one from the first spot, and then I got. Yes, honey. She is being a pain in the mud tonight. Yes, this is a Birmingham, uh, Alabama gin. This is Vulcan. Vulcan? And, uh, Dread River. Dread. So, I didn't do any research on these. I just, you know, do what I do. And went to whole bunch of random liquor stores today talked up uh, you know my channel and what, what I do and where I'm about to go and hopefully where I'm about to go with it so um, some really cool people there today in Birmingham nice nice little place uh, you know has its moments <laughs> all right so Dread River let's go over this one real quick here we're at 44% uh, the Dread River distilling company in Birmingham Alabama Yes, um, founded in the spirit of adventures. All right, uh, Dread River was founded in the spirit of adventure. <laughs> the notion that life is precious and should not fragile. Each day we strive to confront our fears, embrace challenges, and seize every opportunity as we push away from the shore and drift into deep water. We ask that you join us on our journey. A journey of passion, ambition, and discovery. Let the current of adventure carry you, and when you toast to your accomplishments, wait for us. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm not going to actually reach for this one at the moment, uh, because I like to do a little bit more research before we dive in. But that's Dread River, and the other one was Vulcan, like I was saying. Uh... I like this bottle, I think, a little bit more. The other one's kind of just plain Jane, you know? Uh, Red Mott Distilling Company. Uh, made, uh, here's the botanical list on top. I love when they do stuff like this. Uh, let's see. Limestone filtered water. That's not a botanical. That's just how, what we're saying here. It says, made with su superior raw materials from the southern strata. Uh, juniper, of course, coriander, orange peel, and grains of paradise. I like that. I think I'm going to like this one a lot. 45%, I'm going to love it. Uh, let's see, eight times distilled uh, with a copper. A copper still. Small batch. Redmont Distillery takes its name from Birmingham's Red Mountain, the source of iron ore that was formed more than 400 million years ago in limestone and coal. That red ore was one of the th three elements necessary to make iron in the future site of Birmingham. It was the only place in the world where all three were found in such proximity of abundance. A miracle of geological happenstance that led to the founding of the city in 1871. 
1904, the city fathers commissioned a statue of Vulcan, the Roman god of fire, and the forge as a symbol of Birmingham's industrial might. Today, Vulcan, the world's largest cast iron statue, overlooks the city from atop Red Mountains. Redmont Distillery is proud to make pay tribute uh, in the history by featuring an image of Vulcan that adorns the front of each bottle we produce. Their pride in Birmingham is part of Redmond's core values. I like that. I really do. And I really like this punt. I mean, come on, look at that. It's like a whole friggin' glass. You can have, like, water afterwards with this. All right, again, this one I'm not going to open either right now, just because I'd really, really like to do some more. There's the uh, statue right there. All right, well, those two. Then, so then, then, then. I went to the one other liquor store in Alabama, and I can't remember the name of it. It was really not that great, but I did get a bottle of Laird's Applejack um, for $15. I mean, it's usually like $20, $22 bottle. I mean, I mean an, an Applejack cocktail, like the one I make with gin, and oh, God, I can't wait. But anyway, then then I crossed state lines, and then I hit Georgia, and I was like, I'm going to go to the first liquor store I see, and it was this tiny little, like, hole in the wall, it looked like, place, and it was called Whiskey Smisky or something like that, I don't know, I'll figure out the name, um, I don't have a receipt here, everything's over there, anyway. This place, oh my god. Not only did it have like gins, like, would you see these gins I got? But it was so big and they had sectioned off like, like local vodka, imported foreign gluten free vodka, like sections like that I've never seen before. Um, anyway, so let's go from the kind of weird to the oh my god, we're opening this up right now. Um, well, first I hear, I had to get one of these little guys, okay, because I saw this all over the place and I've never seen anywhere else. Barton Gin, now it's in a plastic bottle, we know what that's going to be. Um, but I, the reason I got this was because um, there was a gin that I did on a review here, it's called 13 Colony. Um, the same uh, company makes this this gin, so I wanted to see if it was any, anything like it. Um, it's just a 40% run-of-the-mill, has no botanicals uh, or anything like that. I'm sure it's just juniper and, and, a, and a couple of these standards, you know, but that'll have to do for another time. Okay. Then I got Ghost Coast Burl Gin. Burl. Now, my father's watching this right now. Burl's dad. Anyway, this, this guy's here is made in Savannah. And that's why I got it <laughs> because it's another Georgia gin and uh, Burl gin I, I really I can't wait to do the um, some some uh, history on this because I want I don't know what Burl gin is I want to know what that is and uh, we will come back to this all right discover a world of flavor handcrafted in our copper steel peggy our small batch london dry gin has a home to the finest juniper infused with locally infused botanicals that reveal the distinctive citrus notes of bitter orange aromatic sea buckthorn and rowan berries perfect as the base to a sensational gin and tonic um well doesn't really have any, any much, any other kind of information on here. 
It says it's a Highland gin, so I know that's a Scottish uh, gin. Um, when that name is affixed to some Scottish gins, they usually take that. We'll have to, it looks kind of like Killian's, like the same color. <laughs> Maybe we should try it with Killian's Irish Red. Lager. Gin and lager. All right. I can't believe I found this. Oh my God. And we are going to open this up. Okay. So being up in Middle Tennessee, you know, it, it was hard a lot of times for me to get certain gins without having to, you know, put uh, a word out from a guy to a guy to a guy. That means a girl. That means another guy that has someone that knows someone, you know. That kind of thing ha happened a lot there, but Sipsmith, well, which is a gin I love, I've done two reviews already on, you know, on both of their really, really fine gins, came out with this lemon drizzle gin. Now, what's cool is this isn't a liqueur, it's an actual gin, it's at 40%, and uh, juniper is definitely there. They say, <clears throat> Why Sipsmith? Well, much of the same way wordsmiths love to create all things vertical, we love to create all things sipical. Okay. Here in London, we take our award winning London Dry Gin and distill it with fresh lemon and lemon verbena. Finishing it with a lemon twist, the result is refreshing like bright dry gin with a warming, zesty citrus zing. I mean, come on. I'm so excited. You're gonna get so excited. Okay, I'm gonna open this one right now and we're gonna just go into it. I haven't even looked up like botanicals or anything. I just, you know, this is a special occasion. Uh, every day, a gin reviewer from Middle Tennessee reviews in Middle Georgia. <laughs> Alright, well, it has a wax seal like the other one did. I like that it's in yellow. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Oh, the bottle. Oh yes, and as we can see, as we turn the bottle on the back side, there is some literature and some drawings of the botanical views and the base spirit. All right, we're gonna just kind of. It's a cork. I remember that. Look, my buddy Chase, he gave me this as a going away present. Gonna miss, miss him, gonna miss him alive. Good friend. And a Swiss Army knife with every single thing. And then wait, look at this, it's cool. You got a Spider Man keychain thing that's all encrypted and cased with other keys. See? Oh, anyway. For my birthday. <laughs> He's such a good guy. Alright, anyway, shout out to you, buddy. so cool okay like lemon but sweet juniper is there I mean it's it's there it's there with the lemon and it's just it's like doing this but it's spiral it's seductive hmm. I mean it's like Someone at 
the zoo and it's 120 degrees and everyone's just sweating and you don't want to be there anymore and the kids are screaming and all of a sudden you pass, you, you smell it and it's like a lemon hits you and you're like, oh, fresh lemonade. And you go over to the fresh lemonade thing and you know the guy's back there, he might have like two fingers, but he's still crushing those lemons and that, that burst of oil just that's what it smells like. <laughs> All right, let's, let's do this. Bastards. You, you bastard genius, geniuses over there. Oh my god. Okay. Not only is it Sip Smith, the bass is in it, right? I could tell right away. Juniper. And they got a very distinct, very London dry, very delicious taste and I can taste that but the burn on a 40% was just perfectly balanced with the botanicals placed on my palate the lemon it's definitely you can tell it's like there's like candy lemon peel and then there's like essential lemon oil, maybe the lemon verbenum, maybe the flower they use for that too. I mean, it's like, it's a little floral, but it's mostly citrus, but also there's this, at the end, like a sweet cream-esque, it is, it is not, it is more creamy of a, a mouthfeel, which is... see what a gin and tonic would do with this, so uh, remind me, okay? And I got really good ice. It's been a it's been a long day on the road, okay? <laughs> All right. Nope. Feel the tree. And back the old Swiss Army there. Best gift ever given. So the, the new channel, uh, so I'm thinking of keeping uh, Middle Tennessee in the name still, but also incorporating the uh, the newest city there on the uh, August 16th or whatnot, on this tour of my so-called life. <laughs> uh, you never know. I don't. This is so much more fun being surprised. It's not really, but <laughs> interesting, I'll say that. Oh, man. The effervescence. The fever tree, it like it, it, it brings the lemon. <laughs> so cool! I'm so happy I got to purchase this today. There were so many other gins too, and I just I couldn't do it. You know, it's like I think six is enough, seven including.
this little guy here, I think this guy was like six, seven dollars. So, yeah. All right. Mm. Oh, it's good. It's a, well, it's a very citrusy gin and tonic. In fact, it's the first night. I, I'm no, I'm not even gonna put fruit into it because it will just overpower it with citrus. It's very nice. The juniper is hitting the quinines there. In fact, the mouthfeel has even become more of a creamy feel with the tonic. So it's it's a plus actually. But I could see um, maybe some bitters to just bring some more here spice almost spice forward uh, for a nice gin and tonic uh, also maybe like flavored um, like a, like a watermelon uh, um, like a brandy or a, like a cherry maybe something like that like maraschino yeah I mean it would go good with lemon and cherry you know all right well uh, from uh, from me to you, to you to me, everyone else out here. And me. Oh. Mm. Well, uh, let's just say uh, salute, huh? Eh? Safe travels to all you out there that have to start over again. I'm excited for this change. I mean it. Goodbye.